bless you, Periscope Saints. Good to see you, Pam Christian, Deaconess. Bless you, Minister Neely. And Sister Linda, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Rachel. Good to see you in the house tonight. Praise God. Been missing you. God bless you, Sister Patterson. Good to see you tonight. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Pros. Amen. All of the saints that are gathering. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for the Smith household. Bless you, Latasha. Good to see you this evening. God bless you. Uh, Riley household. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. We receive that in Jesus' name. We love you as well. God bless you, Smith household. Good to see you all in the house this evening. The Lord is good to us tonight. God bless you, Alan household. Alan's household. We thank God for you tonight. All of you that are gathering, uh, coming in quickly. Uh, that means you're ready to be in the presence of God with us. Amen. God bless you, Sister Michaela. God bless you, Queen Gladys. Uh, Gladys Matthews. God bless you, Elder Carver. Thank God for you, Elder Perry. All of the saints coming in. Amen. It's good to see. Good to see. Thank you. We receive that. We receive that blessing in Jesus' name. Good to see the saints tonight. God bless you, Sister Banks. Sister Compsy Banks, come on in. Bless you, Sister jo Joycelyn Compsy. God bless you. Good to see you as well. Good to see you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Desmond. God bless you. Amen. Bless you, BCWC, coming on in the house. We love you tonight. We love you tonight. Cheryl Roberts up in the north. God bless you. Good to see you tonight. Always good to see you in the house. We praise God for you. All of the saints of God that are gathering. Uh, they're coming in and with a heart full of praise, with a heart full of worship, with a heart full of joy, uh, ready, willing, and able to give God their best. We love you as well. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your diligence. Thank you for praying with and for us. We love you tonight, each and every one of you. Amen. He's a great God, and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He's kept us from danger seen and unseen. That's what the old saints would say. <laughs> he's kept us from danger seen and unseen. We're so grateful. That he looks out for us even when we're not aware of what the enemy had planned to do. By his spirit and by the blood of Jesus, he covers us, keeps us, always, always protects us from every, every plan. And we're grateful. We're grateful that he does that consistently, faithfully, without fail. His love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. The Bible says they're new every morning. And great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Bless his holy name. He's a great God, and he's worthy of a great praise. We're so glad that you joined us in tonight. So glad that you decided to come in and worship with us. God bless you, Pastor Dukes. We love you tonight as well. Uh, glad that you decided to lend your voice, lend your heart, lend your spirit so that we can connect as one body. God bless you, Sister Brenda Horton. Thank God for you tonight. We can connect and be one. One people, one body, one spirit, one heart, one mind. And that is our focus is Jesus. He's the simple focus. Our focus is Jesus. And so tonight we're all about him. <laughs> we're all about Jesus tonight. If you're in this conversation and your interest is not Jesus, I, would, I might say you might want to step out, but I'm going to say that. I'm going to say stay in, stay connected. I promise you by the end of this conversation, your focus will be Jesus. You'll find out that he's the best thing that could have ever happened to you. Thank you, Lord God. So we're grateful tonight again that each of you have gathered, that each of you are here, that each of you have availed yourself. You've heard the call, you've heard the summons, and you answered. And I believe, and I know, and I know that since you answered the call, 
He's faithful that sent out the call. There's reward for you tonight. There's blessing for you tonight. There's peace for you tonight. So let's, let's invite, acknowledge the presence of God together. Is that all right? Yeah, let's do it together. God bless you, Sister Carpenter. Father, we thank you again for your mercy, your kindness, your grace, your love toward us. Father, you have been amazing in so many ways. You've kept us from the plan of the enemy. You've covered our hearts. You've covered our minds. You've covered our spirits. Father, you've kept us protected. We thank you that the blood of Jesus has prevailed in every aspect of our life. When the enemy would have come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raised up a standard against him. We thank you that we are safe under the blood. We are safe under the anointing. We are safe under the hand of the Almighty God. Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor that you love us the way that you do in spite of ourselves, regardless of who we are, regardless of our shortcomings, where we've missed it and where we've failed. Your mercy yet prevails. Your love continues and it never ceases. And for that reason, we want to say thank you. For that reason, we want to honor you. For that reason, we want to give you glory and give you praise. For God, you are awesome in every way. We thank you for this nation. We thank you for this people. We thank you, O oh Father, that we are humbling ourselves before you every day, that you might get glory out of our lives. Thank you for our people, God, that are called by your name. Thank you for the privilege, privilege that you've given us, that we might call upon your name. We know that you did not have to choose us, but from the foundations of the world, you elected and chose us for this call. And so we're grateful. We know that it's not of our own doing uh, that we made it to this point. It's totally and completely because of the hand of God, because of his will, his purpose. And we know that the purpose of the Lord always prevails. And so tonight, God, as we gather as one people with one sound, with one voice, we ask that you would be, you would receive our worship, that you would receive our prayer. We thank you that we know when we pray, you hear us. We have confidence that when you hear us, we have the petitions for which we ask because we're asking according to your will. And so God, we know tonight that your will is that we be one. And so make us one continually. Let our praise be one. Let our worship be one. Let this word be one. And Father, we know that in that place of agreement, you command a blessing. So we praise you and honor you tonight. Thank you for every person, every household represented. We speak blessings over them now over their dwelling, over their workplaces, over their, their, their houses, their, their bank accounts, their vehicles, everything that's attached to them. We speak blessings over it. We command that it prosper, be in health, even as their souls prosper. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's honor the Lord together. Let's worship him together, lifting our voices, our hands, our spirit, and let's give God gifts of honor tonight. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. to everlasting. You are God. Thank you, Lord God. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Give it to him. I see you giving it to him. That's wonderful. It is a privilege to be with you tonight. It's an honor uh, to serve and to stand and to walk alongside each one of you uh, who have gathered, who have assembled, who have brought yourselves into the Body of Christ Worship Center by way of the refuge. Amen. We thank God that you have continually and without fail uh, chosen to find a place of worship, to find a space where you can offer to God what's due his name. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, people of God, um, he's so full in this atmosphere. He's so rich in this atmosphere. We pray that these times that we gather are a blessing to you and your household. Um, you may not come to our normal services or be part of our, technically part of our ministry, but you're part of our family. You're part of this ministry by way virtually. And as you have continued to come and as you've continued to support, as you continue to pray with and for us, uh, we've just sort of adopted you and taken you as our own. Um, amen. Uh, we're not trying to proselyte or take other people's members and, and not by any stretch. Uh, but I believe, we believe that uh, we are one body, one kingdom of God, one family of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so whoever, wherever, whenever uh, we gather, uh, we thank God that you have joined your hearts with ours, uh, that you've joined your worship with ours, that you've joined your voice with ours. Uh, because our aim, our aim is to create an atmosphere where God can be God, where the Lord can show himself mighty where he can speak to his people and where they in exchange can offer back to him something that's worthy of his name. That's our aim. That's our desire. So we pray that 
you are experiencing that regularly and that that's your testimony that's your story and uh, uh, we thank God for you it's amazing to us it is absolutely amazing to us how this particular um, time together has taken on its own life has taken on its own uh, personality if you will um, and you all make it that you've made it become what it's become uh, and so as we are you know moving through COVID and uh, prayerfully we'll be able to maneuver more freely we just got to figure out a way to keep this same uh, level of engagement the same level of intimacy and in, 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 um, um, relationship that has been formed and, and forged through this time of COVID uh, you all don't see all of the statistical things, but we do, and um, it's clear to us, it's clear to us that this has become um, part of very many people's lives, um, and it's causing, thank you, Father, Lord, I'm grateful, and it's causing many people to breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo! Share this. Yeah. Share. Share this on your page on Facebook. If you're being blessed, share this live before we um, quickly before we jump into the word. Um, and um, let's enjoy this time with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So again, thank you for being with us. Thank you for connecting with us. Let's turn to the Word of God, um, since that is our objective. Amen. Along with offering him worship, offering him adoration, it is also our objective uh, to hear from him. Mm -hmm. I believe, we believe that God has always prepared something for us, something new, something rich, something fresh, um, something that's going to en enhance our walk with him, challenge our minds, challenge our thinking, and even cause us to press into him a little bit more uh, so that we can know exactly what it is that he wants to do in, through, for, and to us uh, in this hour that we live. Romans chapter 7, if you have your Bibles, pull it up on your device or have it in front of you. Uh, Romans chapter 7, Lord, I praise you. Um, and this particular passage is, um, again, one of those familiar passages that uh, is a continuation of our conversation uh, from last week and last couple weeks where we talked about sin reigning and no longer having power because it was put to death through the through the burial of Jesus Christ. And when we are baptized in his death, then the sin that was once um, reigning over us no longer has power. It's been stripped of its power. Um, and uh, we now live a, a life of freedom. We talked about freedom. We talked about what it means to be free. We talked about um, uh, the benefits of being free. Um, and all that that brings into our lives and for our lives. Um, going forward in, in chapter 7 from chapter 6, it just sort of continues the conversation a little bit further and a little bit deeper. So we're going to take on chapter 7 sort of in three parts. We're going to do the first part tonight, uh, if the Lord says the same, and then we'll, we'll take on the next two parts. Just as a, a preview of chapter 7, it starts out by continuing the conversation about how death um, no or, or how sin no longer has uh, reign over us and it compares it to relationship we'll talk about that the middle part goes on to say a little bit more about that about um, um, needing to be rescued from sin uh, by way of death and now we live we live according to the word of god and then finally uh in the last part which we'll get to in a couple weeks uh talks about us talks about the war <laughs> talks about how we still battle uh, and it's amazing that we battle with something that's dead um, or should be. Let me say it that way. Yeah. And we'll talk about, you know, that phenomena and, and, and how God intends to deal with it. Uh, because I know and I believe and I understand that as we are all living in the flesh, we still wrestle. We still wrestle. And God's giving us freedom over that wrestle. But let's start with verse 1. We'll go down to verse 12, 1 through 12 tonight, uh, if we can get that far. And uh, we'll see what the Lord will say to us. So we're reading. Uh, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. 
For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be buried to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were, hit, we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire, for apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Mm -hmm. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading uh, and the hearing of his word. Um, as I said, um, in the beginning here, Paul starts off talking again um, in, in verse 1 about being dead. Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, what that means uh, last time. Uh, that we no longer are living under the penalty of death simply because we died with Christ in baptism. Um, and because of that, we take it on that, we no longer live to fulfill the lust of the flesh. We talked about, uh, for, from 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, I think last week we talked about the lust of the, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. We talked about those things simply because those were undergirding um, items that always fed into the flesh that would always lead to death. Now here, Paul, again, is, is taking on this conversation uh, and basically telling us and reminding us again that we don't have to live unto death. We're not living unto death. We're living unto life mm -hmm. simply because Christ died for us. He took the sin, the, the penalty of sin, into the grave, and when he came up, he brought life with him now we're married to him. So let's talk about, for a few, few moments, this whole analogy that Paul lifts up regarding marriage and uh, adult, being an adulteress. Right. And I love this uh, um, analogy that he, he's using. And, and, and one thing about the Word of God that I'm always uh, intrigued about and, and very appreciative uh, of the Holy Spirit for doing was using real life examples for us to be able to understand the intent and the heart of God. Jesus was a master of it. He would always teach, uh, the Bible said he taught in parables. What are parables? Parables are stories that have a dual meaning. Um, and so he said, the, the disciples asked him one time, why do, you, why do you teach us in parables? And he said, so that those uh, that are not supposed to see, I'm paraphrasing, those that are not supposed to see won't see. Mm -hmm. But for those that it's intended to understand, they'll get revelation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's designed to uh, reveal to some and to conceal from others. Mm -hmm. Same is true when we're talking about now, Paul, using um, this analogy of marriage. We understand that in, uh, in, in these times, that if you were to be um, living with another while your spouse uh, remained alive, you would be considered an adulterer. Same is true today if you guys are not, or if you guys are still married. Um, and so uh, Paul said um, here, uh, if you're living in that kind of situation, everything that you produce is going to produce death. Hmm. 
Everything that you uh, uh, produce is not going to have the proper outcome. Um, it's, 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 it's in a situation, you're living in a situation where we're literally living beneath our privilege. And so Paul, uh, verse 2 says, For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. As so long as he liveth. In other words, um, as long as uh, 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 I am connected to one, as long as that person is living, I'm bound to that one. Mm -hmm. Same is true. He's using this as an analogy again to describe what happened when we were married to sin. Mm -hmm. When we were married to sin, we were bound to sin. But when sin was put to death, everything about that relationship died in the death. Lord, I praise your holy name. Hallelujah. And Paul said, because of that death, it freed me to adjoin and to connect with mm -hmm. another. To marry another. My God in heaven. And so now we're in a new relationship, a legitimately new relationship, not one that is, is made uh, uh, illegal, but one that is made whole. And the thing about this, uh, and let's talk about marriage, let's talk about relationships. When we were in um, 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 that previous relationship, let's call it that, that relationship with sin, when we were married to sin, uh, the Bible says that it brought forth fruit. Right. Because part of marriage, part of marriage is uh, birthing or producing or reproducing. And so that sin relationship, the only thing that it could give birth to was death. That's right. And so uh, if I were to read it in the Message Bible, the Message Bible says something to, uh, 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 around, the, uh, it says it something like this. It said, out of that marriage came miscarriages and stillbirths. Wow. Wow. In other words, although it formed and it looked like it was going to be prosperous and it was going to bring forth something that was good, every time it brought forth, what it brought forth ended up in death. That's right. And that's the only thing sin has to offer. Mm -hmm. Go back to the last chapter. The last verse said, for the wages of sin, death. that's the only thing that husband can offer us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the trick of the enemy is the uh, trick of the enemy is uh, to make us think that if it's pleasurable, then what it produces will be good. Oh, say that again. That's good. It's the trick of the enemy to make us think that if it's pleasurable, then what it produces is going to be good. This feels good to me. So? This is, this is good to me. There's no way what I'm about to bring forth is going to be death giving. It's going to produce death. I mean, it's a, it can only produce good. But no, 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 no. That's that's the trick of the enemy. That's the trick of the enemy. Just because it feels good doesn't mean that what it's going to produce is good. It feels good to the flesh. Mm -hmm. And when we sow to the flesh, the Bible says we'll reap corruption. Mm -hmm. And what did we say last week about uh, um, death? Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean a graveyard dead today. Uh uh. But it puts you on the path yeah. <clears throat> to utter destruction. Mm -hmm. And so there are things about us that die instantly. Mm -hmm. Relationship with God. Familiarity and connection with him. Mm -hmm. That's the first death. That we become separated. Uh, you know, uh, that, listen, physical death don't even compare to that if you want to know the truth. But to be totally disconnected from God and to have access to him, that's a huge Loss. That's a major death. That's utter death. And that's why when we're connected with sin, when we're married to sin, mm -hmm. every time we, we lay down with it, <laughs> and it, we conceive something. Yes. We conceive something. Mm -hmm. And whatever we conceive has to come forth over time. And when it comes forth, it's not going to look like what you thought it would. There's going to be mourning. Mm -hmm. There's going to be crying. There's going to be sadness. There's going to be misery. There's going to be pain. There's going to be despair. There's going to be disruption. All of these things come because that's the fruit of that seed. Brother Carter said, there's a way that seems right to man. Absolutely. Uh -huh. The Lord says, there's a way that seems right to man.
seems right to man, but the end thereof, the Bible says, are the ways of death. That's Proverbs. Amen. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. It may seem right, and this is why we cannot afford to be led by our heart. Follow your heart. Not not the one that's deceitful. <laughs> not, no, no, that, no, no. not that one that's wicked. No, no, no. Deceitful above all and desperately wicked. That's what that's what God calls it in Jeremiah. That the heart of man is deceitful above all and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's why that's why we can't we can't trust what our heart desires. We can't trust that un except under the blood. Under the blood. Outside of relationship with God, your passions will lead you to hell. Simply said, that's the that's the final product of that relationship. Yeah. But thanks be to God, as we just read, yeah. thanks be to God, yeah. we have been lifted, shifted, and removed. There literally has been a severing. Yeah. A severing, a cutting off, a cutting away, a dissolving of that one relationship by way of Jesus Christ. And so what Christ does now is he says, now that you are free, <laughs> now that you have been dis uh, uh, severed from that relationship of death, mm -hmm. I'm now going to come in and retrieve you and buy you for myself. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, not only did he buy me for himself, yeah. but he also laid down with me. And he placed something on the inside of me that when now when I'm uh, 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 being uh, I'm, now when I'm conceiving, I am carrying something that's going to bring forth life, life. and life eternal. Mm -hmm. We call that fruit and fruit that remains. Remain. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Yeah. So the difference here, Paul, Paul is saying, is no, we, we're not going to get stuck with that old old relationship and that old guy. And, and in today, you know, we we have the uh, the the. God in his permissive will has allowed it so that people have gotten divorced. That's a form of death to a previous relationship. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. It's a loss. Mm -hmm. And so we have divorce and it's legal and it's, it's, it's proper and, and it's done. That's not God's perfect will, but it's, it's his permissive will and he allows it to be. We're not going to fight about is it good or bad or, or, or right or wrong. I'm not getting into that, that debate. What I will say is legal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and so in this world today, we have legal divorce. And when we have a legal divorce, what a legal divorce does is it severs the relationship that we had previously, which gives us the opportunity to adjoin with another. I'm talking about in the natural. Gives us the, the ability to adjoin with another. And so what was birthed in that first relationship uh, had its own merit. But what's born in the next relationship is, is going to have a whole nother look and a whole nother feel. The point is, is that something is being birthed either way. And we've got to understand that we, although, as Pastor said earlier, it may look good, feel good, smell good, uh, make us all that, it is not what God intends for us. That death relationship is not what God intends for us because the end of it will always, always, always yield and birth death. And it is God's heart that we have life yeah. and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. We haven't begun to live. We haven't begun to live until we allow God to kill the flesh and the desire thereof. Absolutely. And I just, I, 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 it's been said, I'm going to say it again, I just want to make sure that we don't get lost in the analogy about the marriage, about natural marriage. Don't get lost in that. The principle that's being established. The principle. Is, there's a principle that's being established, a precedent that's being set there. The principle that is being established is being and being revealed is that as long as sin is alive, you're bound to it. That's right. But once we come under the blood, once we come into relationship with Jesus, sin and the penalty thereof is dead. And when it's dead, we're free, as Oversi said earlier, we're free then to marry, enter into committed relationship right. with Jesus Christ. Right into covenant relationship that covenant is dead with sin once that's dead when it's dead then you can marry another yeah. and that's the principle that's being established so what we, what we're focusing in on is the work that jesus did the work of the cross the work of the shedding of his blood and once we come under that how that it kills what once had us bound mm -hmm. 
and releases us into newness of life. Mm -hmm. And then we have to be renewed in our minds so we can walk that out. So one of the things I, I, I want us to make sure we also catch, and thank you, Pastor, for that. One of the other things I want us to also catch is that although we have died to sin, mm -hmm. and although we are connected with a new husband, quote unquote, mm -hmm. uh, and we're in a new marriage relationship, our flesh is still alive. Yeah. We'll get to this in, in a subsequent um, um, teaching um, in the same chapter. Right. We have to remember that our flesh is still alive. And because the flesh is familiar, understood, had relationship, enjoyed the relationship parts of it, there are things from that previous relationship until God free, totally frees us from that appetite. It still has potential to creep its way into our lives or to show up in ways that we thought, you know, I, I didn't know I still had that in me. I didn't know I still had that one to do that. I didn't know I, I still like that still. All of those things. Right. So sin still has the potential to show up in our lives. This is why it's imperative that we uh, be honest before God and we tell the truth before God and we admit to him, God, we need you every day. What is sin? Sin is just coming short mm -hmm. of God's expectation. It's missing the mark. Whatever the standard God has set, and we miss that, that's sin. It's, it's basically disobedience. It's basic disobedience. It's, you know, we categorize what sin is, and, and this sin is worse than this sin, and this sin is bigger than that sin. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. Sin is sin. Yeah. It's a three-letter word, S-I-N. <laughs> yeah. Now, it, it has adjectives or manifestations in multiple different areas, but the core is S-I-N. And so wherever we miss God, that's sin. Yeah. And so we have to be willing to say to our new spouse, <laughs> I failed you. Yeah. I need you. Mm -hmm. Help me. I can't shake this old habit. I can't shake this old relationship. I need your help. Yeah. Husband, <laughs> talking about Christ. Yeah. I need your help. Yeah. To help bring me out of this mindset. Again, we go, I'll re, re, allude to it again. Be renewed yeah. in your mind. Yes. There's one thing about salvation is that it's a it's done instantly. When we when we acknowledge and accept Christ, mm -hmm. we're saved immediately. Yeah. That's immediate. That's positional salvation. There also is a, a, something we call a, a, a sanctification. Yeah. Walking it out. Mm -hmm getting the things out of us yeah. that don't please God and allowing his spirit mm -hmm. to replace those areas so that we can be fully and, and completely the person and persons that he's called us to be. Mm -hmm. The Bible says uh, that he might present it to himself, mm -hmm. a glorious church. Yes. In other words, he's taking on the responsibility of adorning us, of cleaning us up, of, 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 of sanctifying us, of pure. He's taking on that responsibility. Right. Only thing that's required of us is for us to let him. Yeah. It's for us to let him. Mm -hmm. Jose. The only thing Jose wanted to do was to care for Gomer. Gomer was his wife. The only thing he wanted to do was to show her love and to show her covering and to show her uh, uh, value and to, to give her everything that she needed to live, to provide for her every and protect her and to keep her. That's all Jose wanted to do. But every time it seemed that Jose tried to portray and do those things for Gomer, Gomer went looking for something else or somebody else to fulfill something that she already had. And so God said to Jose, he said, uh, uh, before they were uh, joined together, he said, you are always asking me, you're always inquiring, what is it like to be me and have a relationship with Israel? Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'm going to let you find out. I'm going to let you marry this woman called Gomer who has no heart for me at all, but uh, you have a heart for her. And you're going to naturally feel what I feel every day with a people that I have committed my life to and I have committed my covering for and I have committed prosperity and love and, and all the things that come with, with, with this relationship and they still choose to do something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So for those that don't know the story, Gomer, uh, uh, you can read the book of Hosea in the Old Testament. Gomer would go back. She would go out, leave the house. Now, I'm paraphrasing. She would leave the house, go back out in, in, a, in the streets, performing her harlot duties. Right. Gomer was a... Yeah. Gomer was a prostitute. Yeah, she was a lady of the night. Uh, <laughs> a street? A street walker. A street walker. Uh, one of those people. Amen. Uh, her heart. But because the street walker wasn't dead. Oh, come on, Pastor. Yes. Because the street walker wasn't dead. She was married. She was in a new relationship, but there was still some street walker left in her. And so when things weren't quite where she needed them to be. Or she thought. Right? Or where this new relationship didn't minister to certain parts of her. Mm. Didn't serve certain parts of her mm. that were still alive. Mm. She would be found sneaking out the back window. Mm. Climbing out the window. Going to find something to minister to that place that used to bring her pleasure. And should have died. But this is, this is the challenge, if you will, if I can use that word uh, or term. This is the challenge that God faces oftentimes in relationship with us. Is that we have come into this relationship with him. And we are still dealing with some stuff from our last marriage. My that, God. That's still alive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus, help Thank us. You, Thank, you, Thank, you, Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. The blood is enough to deal with that that's still alive. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Ghost kill that. Let him minister to your thinking, mm -hmm. your mind, so that you can go ahead and fully give yourself to this new relationship in Christ um, without the torment. Ooh. Without the ball and chain and the torment and the weight of that last relationship. Let me say this uh, one last thing about that point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the enemy would cause us to believe, and I'm going to talk again naturally. Some of you all who have been uh, through a divorce or been in a divorce or, and walked through that whole experience and you got out of it. You got out of it for whatever reason. I'm not going to assess that. But what the enemy will make us believe, and I'm talking spiritually now, mm -hmm. is that, number one, I'm not going to let anybody ever do that to me again. Right. Nobody's going to control me. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Nobody's going to run my little business. Nobody's going to blah, 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 blah. We run to that. We got to listen. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is because our reference point of relationship and marriage is this negative, dark thing we look at God suspect. There's a part of us, until the Holy Spirit seriously delivers us, there's a part of us that will stay in a position of safety. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is we will only let God get so far in. Mm -hmm. We will only let him get so close in. We will only let him touch us in so many ways. Because we're going to keep that part of us covered and secure because we don't want it ever to be injured again. Mm -hmm. Well, people of God, the only way you are going to ever conceive and to bear what God has for you is you've got to let him in. Yeah. You've got to take the guards off. You've got to take the cover off. We, 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 we use this terminology and it may be a little bit much for some of y'all but just hang in uh, we use this terminology that a lot of folk practice uh, safe worship safe worship <laughs> safe worship mm -hmm. uh, what do we mean by that we, we, we worship God uh, with, protection. with protection because we know <laughs> we know that if we if, if we go ahead and, and worship God fully open yeah. fully free unprotected insecure that something might just happen and when that something happens it makes us better 
The enemy wants us to believe that what God is trying to get to us is, is really God trying to take something from us. Well, well, he is. He's trying to take away death and give you life. Mm -hmm. You say these two things. Number one, you can't get pregnant fully dressed. Impossible. We're going to have to strip to conceive. Okay. We're going to have to un be uncovered. And number two, we cannot, God cannot heal what we won't let him touch. My God. My God. Did you, did you hear that? Did you hear that? God cannot heal what we won't let him touch. And so those superficial scabs that we put over things. All we're saying to God is off limits. Yes. I've known situations where people have had to have surgery, mm -hmm. um, and 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 they they've had they have they've had to have had surgery because at some point in their walk or in their life mm -hmm. they had another surgery and it didn't heal correctly. Right. And what happens over time is that scar tissue develops, yes. and that scar tissue becomes a problem over time. And so the physician says, I got to go back in and remove the scar tissue mm -hmm. because it didn't cover, it didn't heal the way it was supposed to heal. And so now the scar tissue has now become an issue. And so what God sometimes has to do with us is he's got to go in because we built it up so thick and so uh, heavy and so, uh, so, so deep that he's got to go in and remove the scar tissue so that he can get down to the really real infectious area so that he can bring healing. Only God has the ability to go in with a knife and cut and come out with the same knife and heal at the same time. Yeah. But it requires that we yield. We gotta yield. If I trust the surgeon, if I believe that the surgeon can repair whatever's going on on the inside of me, if I have that much faith yes. that the surgeon can go ahead, there is no way that I'm gonna fight the anesthesiologist. Because I know that the, the job of the anesthesiologist is to make me unconscious. Hello, somebody. <laughs> that, I'll say that again. The Ooh. job of the anesthesiologist is to make me unconscious. In other words, it's to put my mind to sleep. Mm -hmm. Because I'll get stuck in my mind the very moment that the surgeon picks up the scalpel and I'm aware of it, I'm jumping off the table. That's it. But if the anesthesiologist who puts something over my face and tells me, breathe in. Mm -hmm. And count backwards. And count backwards. <laughs> By the time I get to six from 10, I'm scrambling up my numbers because everything's going into, is fading into black. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in position. The next thing I know, there's somebody standing over my bed talking to me. And I'm waking up out of it. I'm waking up out of it. I'm coming out of it. And I ask somebody the question, well, when are we going to go in surgery? Oh, that's done. <laughs> well, when did it happen? When, when you, you yielded. Yield it. You... it happened when you yielded. When you yielded. But we got to let God do his job. Ooh. And then they say, move your fingers and move your toes. You find out you can do things that you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It happens when you yield it. So, saints of God, as we're talking about this relationship, my goodness, where did the time go? When we're talking about this relationship, dying to one, being married to another. Why? So that the fruit that we now bear yes. bring glory. I hope this is good for somebody because <laughs> it certainly is good for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Anything else, Pastor? When it's dead, you can walk in the newness of life. Simple. Yeah. It's that. It's over. That's it. Yeah. It's a good day. <laughs> and it's a good day. It's a good day to die and to live. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is helping us day by day yep. learn how to yield. Yep. Um, yielding is good. Yielding to God is good. It's a good thing. Yes, and it, yield, and it brings forth life. 
Amen. So Amen. we thank God for you uh, yes, tonight. Indeed. We appreciate you for connecting with us. Um, wow, God did a drive-by tonight. He yeah, did. You know? <laughs> It was a good one. It was a good one. Go back and watch this over when it's over. Amen. And, and rewind the tape if you need to listen again. Just, right. Uh, so you can take notes. So you can take notes and, 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 and soak it in. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's going to be a blessing from beginning to end. Amen. If you want to give tonight, if you want to sow into the ministry, uh, you're able to do that. Go online, bcwcga.org. Go to the donate button and you can give that way if you want to be a blessing. Also, if you want to cash out your gift, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, dollar sign BCWCGA. A dollar sign BCWCGA. You can cash out your gift that way if you'd like to do that as well. We just love you. We thank God for the opportunity to walk alongside and with you, to share in your journey, and to be a part of what God is doing in your life. Uh, I'm telling you, because as you go, we go, uh, and we get to celebrate what God is doing in each and every one of you uh, tonight. We love every one of you, each and every one of you. And so as we always always declare and decree mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we believe that the, the glory, glory of the Lord, Lord shall be revealed and, and we shall see it together. together. God bless you. We, we love, love you. you. Go with God. God bless you.